Hello again. Today we have a 1960s Omega Chronostop, a watch that has running hour and minute hands, but the seconds hand is a chronograph seconds that can be started and stopped using the one pusher at two o'clock. After starting the chronograph mechanism, one can hold down the pusher to stop it and read the time. Releasing the pusher then resets the chronograph. This watch is in a bit of a rough shape and the seconds hand is a replacement that has shed its paint all over the dial. We will be refinishing the case, fully servicing the movement and sorting out that seconds hand. We start by removing the unbranded bracelet. We won't give it any more attention as I think the watch will look better with a racing style strap anyway. Remove the case back and the old gasket. Then we can have a look at the chronograph complication in action. This is a cam based chronograph where the operating lever toggles the cam between two states, running and reset. As mentioned before, holding down the pusher disengages the coupling clutch but doesn't release the return hammer. That is until the pusher is let go of. Continuing on with the disassembly, we remove the case clamps, the crown and stem. Freeing the movement from the case, you can see that the knockoff replacement hand has shed its paint. This will need to be replaced with a genuine Omega seconds hand. All the hands are removed, the movement ring is removed, and the dial is removed. You can see that the paint even got into the keyless and motion works under the dial. This isn't good. With some of the paint removed by hand, the owl wheel is removed, along with the cannon pinion. Then the watch is flipped over. First, the chronograph works are removed, starting with the coupling clutch spring, then the return hammer spring, cam spring, return hammer, the cam, the coupling clutch, intermediate operating lever, operating lever, operating lever spring works, intermediate operating lever spring, chronograph seconds cock, the chronograph seconds wheel, then the coupling clutch is disassembled. The balance pallet forks are taken out before the chronograph drive wheel is removed, so as to not damage the escape wheel or pallet forks. We continue the disassembly of the base movement with the escape wheel, the train wheel or chronograph bridge. We see most of the going train, then remove the going barrel, the third and fourth wheels. The centre wheel pivot hole appears to have been manipulated in the past, meaning it takes a little force to remove. If this causes a problem in the rebuild, we'll take care of it then. For now the centre wheel is removed, then the click works and the crown wheel are removed from the underside of the train wheel bridge. Going back to the front of the movement, we can remove the remaining keyless works and motion works. Firstly, the setting lever spring, yoke and yoke spring, minute wheel and the two intermediate wheels, then the crown, stem, winding gear and sliding gear. To finish the disassembly, the main spring and arbor are removed from the going barrel. There we go, the whole movement fully taken apart. Before the parts are cleaned in the ultrasonic, the jewels on the main plate and bridges are pegged out, as well as any loose oil and debris being removed. Then all the parts are cleaned in four stages of ultrasonic bars, except for the balance pallet forks that are cleaned manually. Whilst the movement is being cleaned, let's turn our attention to the case. Let's remove the crystal, then the pushers, and the pendant tubes. It will all be cleaned in a different ultrasonic bath before being polished later on. Here are the case and case back after cleaning. Now let's have a look at the cleaned movement. To go with the cleaned movement, we have a new mainspring for the going barrel. We start the reassembly of the movement with a going barrel, putting in the new mainspring, oiling and replacing the barrel arbor, and putting the lid back on. Next we go to the main plate to get the keyless and some of the motion works back in and oiled. Setting lever, crown, stem, winding pinion and sliding pinion, intermediate wheels and minute wheel, yoke and yoke spring, and before the yoke spring flies off we get the setting lever screwed down. Then we reassemble the click works and crown wheel on the back of the train wheel bridge. And here is a close up of how clean the jewels need to be, absolutely spotless. With the train wheel bridge ready, we can get the going train in. From largest to smallest, it is the going barrel with the ratchet wheel on top, the center wheel, which does one full rotation each hour, then the third wheel, fourth wheel, and the escape wheel with its different shaped teeth to interface with the pallet forks. The train wheel bridge goes back on, as well as the escape wheel cock. After oiling the pivot holes, we can start working on the chronograph complication. Starting with the centre chronograph seconds wheel, the heart cam and pinion are oiled. The operating lever and intermediate operating lever spring are replaced. Then the operating lever spring works, and then the intermediate operating lever. The sliding clutch is reassembled and oiled, then put back on, followed by the cam and return hammer. Now time to put the large springs back on. Cam spring, return hammer spring, sliding clutch spring. The last part of the chronograph that needs to be replaced is the chronograph driving wheel, which will need to be done using a staking set to get the wheel on level. There we go, chronograph drive wheel back on. Next the pallet forks are reinstalled. 
Then the watch is turned over to oil the dial side pivots and the pallet fork jewels. Back on the back we put the balance back on, then clean and oil the cap jewels on both sides of the balance. With the watch movement up and running, we can make some small adjustments to the chronograph if necessary. In this watch's case, the hammer struck true, but the depth of engagement of the teeth between the drive wheel and clutch and clutch and second wheel was very low, so they were adjusted so more of each tooth was in contact with the next wheel. During the usual inspections, it was noticed that the watch wasn't running great. Upon reassembly of the balance, it can be seen that the hairspring bobs up and down. This will need to be looked into for the watch to run accurately. To start this repair, we take off the balance assembly and remove the balance wheel. We can clearly see that the hairspring is askew. After confirming that it is not the collet that is the problem, the hairspring is removed from the balance wheel. Whilst the balance is disassembled, I double check that the pivots are clean and straight before moving on to correcting the hairspring. The hairspring is bent from the collet in the middle, so it appears as if the whole spring is at an angle. Over the course of several light tweaks, the hairspring was adjusted to lie flat once again. It was inspected after each movement to minimise the stress on the metal, and in the end it is looking much better. After the adjustments, the hairspring is cleaned, then reattached to the balance wheel with a staking set. Cool, two uses in one project. The balance wheel and hairspring are cleaned again before being reassembled. Then the balance assembly is reinstalled into the movement. As you can see, the hairspring is now not bouncing up and down. Before on the left, after on the right. And after regulation, the performance is much better too. Lovely. We can finish off the movement by reattaching the cannon pinion and the hour wheel and spacer. Then the dial can go back on with the hour hand and minute hand. Here is the new old stock Omega Chronostop seconds hand. It looks so much better than the old one and it is a genuine Omega part. It really does make the watch when it's back on. We're going to do a bit of a tarting up to the case. It is quite heavily scratched and I think in this case the watch will look really nice being repolished and brushed. Most facets of the case will be polished except for the sunburst bezel and the straight grained flat back of the case back. Each step will require the case to be covered with thermally resistant tape and each area will be polished or brushed one by one. Even each lug horn has to be taped twice to maintain the hard and sharp edges. I think the final results speak for themselves. It's looking gorgeous. And the case back doesn't look too bad either, maintaining the existing text around the edge too. Before on the left, after on the right. A new pendant tube is put on to replace the old damaged one, but the original pusher tube is put back on with a new gasket, then the original pusher is screwed back on. The same treatment that was given to the case is given to the Omega logoed crystal. The surface is refinished with a few grades of wet and dry paper and then polished with polywatch. The crystal then has its tension ring replaced. It is then pressed back into the case. The watch will now be prepared for water resistance testing. A new back gasket is greased and installed. The crown is removed from the movement and the crown gasket re-greased, then taped into the case. Unfortunately, the case failed the water resistance testing as bubbles came out from the pusher meaning that there is a leak from there. This might be able to be fixed with a new pusher, but to keep it as original as possible, I'm not gonna do that for the moment. For now, we get the movement back in the case, turn it over, get the movement ring in, then the crown back in, case clamps to secure the movement, and the case back and gasket are put back on. With a racing style strap with orange stitching to match the chronograph seconds hand, this watch is ready to go. Thank you very much for watching. I sell watches, including this one on eBay, link in the description. And if you would like your watch serviced, my website link is also in the description. If you enjoyed this video, please consider liking and subscribing. I'll let this play out for a bit if you want to see more of this cracking watch.